Boom, doom, boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, doom, 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 doom. Law and order. Jerron Boots Ennis, Brian Norman. The two go at it. One is being accused of ducking. One is saying, let's go. It ain't over. Let me try to break down what is going on in this game of boxing. Make sure you guys follow me at Boxing Ego 1 on my Instagram page. Best in the business, and it's not even close. Let me get you guys all caught up to speed. Smash the like button. Jerron Boots Ennis has accused Brian Norman Jr. of ducking. You heard it. Push the goddamn button. You heard her. He said he's ducking. Of course, Team Norman, they got their own say. They jump on the mic and they rebuttal that and say that is not true. We are still down to fight. So I made this graphic for you again so you can see it for yourself. Follow me on social media. We'll get through what is being said. So Brian Norman's pops says, and I'll read it. It says, Jerron Ennis, your people told you a muff lie. We said yes to the fight. We simply made a counter offer. In fact, I called your pops, Bozy Ennis, and I told him after we accepted, he didn't even know about it. Oh, we have plenty of time to make this fight happen next. All caps, all caps. You know, Ego, I'll be telling the truth, so I don't be capping, but he wrote that in all caps. He says, we have plenty of time to make this fight happen next. You, sir, are not the boogeyman you think you are. People just lie to you and say people don't want to fight you. Fuck all that. We up next. Call Edward Hearn, Eddie Hearn, and tell him we up next. And then he tagged a bunch of people. And he tagged the zone and Eddie Hearn. You guys see it on the screen. Yeah, yeah. You never know. Boom. Blue Magic. Name brand like Pepsi. I guarantee my doll. Then he finishes by saying, Stop the BS. We got plenty of time. He tags Ennis again. Jerron Boots Ennis. The way you said we turned it down was hilarious. You are not the best. And we about to show you. Let's get, get, get it. All right. So there's more, but let me say my piece. This all stems from an interview that just dropped on YouTube where Jerron Ennis, I believe he was talking to YSM Sports. He stated that Brian Norman was sent an offer and they declined. And, you know, that's kind of where he left it. And the clip started circulating mostly on X that I seen. And Brian Norman, he jumped in the mix to clarify. And then Brian Norman himself, the fighter, he says, I ain't turned down a dang thing. You guys see it. So they're vehemently denying that they duck and smoke with Jerron Ennis. This is Brian Norman's manager who's seen it. It says, Norman turns down an offer to fight Ennis, IBF welterweight champion, Jerron Ennis, yada, 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 potential unification fight with the WBO title holder, Brian Norman. An offer was sent two days ago. They turned it down, right? Brian Norman, you have his manager, and she says, this is not true. So... Team Norman is definitely checking this at the door. DAZN reporter. So keep in mind, Boots fights on DAZN now. He's with Eddie Hearn. This is DAZN reporter. Chris Mannix. Brian Norman Jr., who was recently elevated to the full 147-pound champ by the WBO, is pushing for a unification fight with Jerron Boots Ennis. On social media, Norman's father says his team made a counteroffer to match room this week and that Brian Norman is ready to fight. So right there, that's kind of a red flag. You ask why? Let me tell you, man. You have a DAZN reporter 
And he's saying that Brian Norman is pushing to fight the DAZN fighter and not the other way around, which the DAZN fighter, Jerron Boots Ennis, said it was up in smoke and they duck in smoke. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, why would a DAZN, it would seem to me like the DAZN reporter would be biased for the DAZN fighter, but I just showed you the tweet from Chris Mannix and he's saying and suggesting that Brian Norman is pushing for the fight, which is a contrast to what Jerron Ennis said in that interview. And it's actually more similar to what Norman's manager is saying, as well as Brian Norman, as well as his dad, you see? So I find that interesting. That's why I included it. So again, the zone reporter is saying that like making it not sound like because the way Jerron Ennis kind of phrased it, he made it sound almost as if the deal is off and, you know, they're going on their separate ways, which save that thought. We'll get to Dan Raphael. Another box reporter said from Norman's manager pushing back on an account that is often wrong. And he he actually. Quote tweeted. Brian Norman's manager, which I already went over. So he's saying there's they're pushing back on a uh, Twitter account that is oftentimes wrong. Mm -mm -mm. So what are my thoughts? I mean, my thoughts are very simple. Jerron Boots Ennis, definitely a talented fighter. But here's what here's what the skinny is. What I truly believe is that Brian Norman and Jerron Ennis for obvious reasons is harder to make because of he's a brand new champion with top rank and Jerron Ennis is in a partnership with Eddie Hearn and rematch room on the zone. So we don't know where the priorities lie, right? And what I've noticed in boxing and you got to be hip to it. But what I've noticed is oftentimes you'll see and I actually wrote a tweet and I'm just going to read it because I got my thoughts out perfectly. And I want you guys to see this and then I'll elaborate. So I said, hashtag unpopular opinion. Notice the pattern in boxing when a fighter is going to be in the lackluster fight that the fans don't want. You'll often start to hear about all of these offers that went out. So when the fighter fights the undesired fight, they can easily say, oh, we had to fight undesired guy A because no one else wanted to fight us. And I gave examples. So examples of this would be Eddie Hearn claims he sent a massive offer to Mario Barrios to fight Jerron Boots Ennis. Now they're saying it's Brian Norman Jr. who turned it down, right? So already insanely confusing and i'll explain why jerron boots ennis already fought a guy named karen chuka hodson or whatever his name is right it was a boring fight that is his mandatory and he's an ibf champion the ibf ordered him to fight because that's the highest ranked person the karen guy again so now in the news cycle, Eddie Hearn's doing interviews saying we sent a massive offer to Mario Barrios. For one, Mario Barrios literally just had a baby. I think it's his first child on top of, you know, just being a father now. He just had a baby a couple of days ago. So I'm pretty sure it wasn't he not worried about that. Two. There have been strong indications. Check, check out Alan Dawson. I've made a video about PBC. It's probably two videos ago on the channel. Check that out. But in the PBC update, my boy Alan Dawson spoke with his sources with PBC. And they said Al Heyman, basically there was almost like a leave of absence. He had to take care of some stuff. Now he's back. They're getting the PBC cycle rolling. One of the fights included, they're trying to make Mario Barrios 
versus Manny Pacquiao because Pacquiao wants to try to win a title. Mario Barrios just became the WBC champion because Crawford moved to 54, where he was previously undisputed. Before that, Errol Spence had the belt, and Crawford beat Errol Spence. So Brian Norman is elevated to the WBO full champion, and Mario Barrios is the WBC champion. So that being said, why is Eddie Hearn saying we sent a massive offer to Mario Barrios knowing he has a Pacquiao, knowing he just had a kid, like I just said, and knowing he has a Pacquiao fight on deck, more than likely, that's what the strong rumors suggest. Ain't nobody going to pick Jerron Boots Ennis over a legend like Pacquiao. And especially when Jerron Ennis was with Showtime and now he's with a different entity on DAZN. And then Pacquiao worked with Al Heyman to close off his career, his professional boxing career in the Ugas fight. So him working again to try to get a title with Barrios, it makes all the sense in the world. They were calling Pacquiao the Mexicutioner back when, you know, in his prime or whatever. And you have a Mexican-American champion. And at age 45 or whatever age, Manny Pacquiao is, um, I, I, I believe uh, I want to... to, to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. Ooh. You know, you got to be realistic. Like some of the, he's not going to fight at 54 and fight some of these big, massive funduras and stuff like that. He's a 45 year old fighter. The Barrios came from 40, just like Pacquiao is an eight division champ. So he came from lighter divisions. So I think that's like a good fight and kind of like a fair fight. Boots looks like almost like a middleweight. So, you know, Pacquiao ain't going to fight no boots at 45. You know, it just doesn't really make sense for his legacy and where he's at. So anyway, I hope you guys see I'm trying not to rant too much, but I hope you guys see the pattern where it becomes this name dropping contest. And Eddie Hearn saying like, oh, we wanted this massive fight with uh, Barrios, but he turned it down. But I just went over Barrios. Now they're saying it's Brian Norman that's turning it down. And his team is saying, man, we ain't turned down nothing. We sent a counter offer to your offer. So that why that's part of negotiation. Part of negotiation is not like you send me an offer and I just take it. That's not that's not the business. You get you're entitled to send a counter offer. So to me, this looks like pump faking, and it looks like Boots is gonna fight Karen. Chukukini or whatever his name is Chutney and you're name dropping all these other fighters so you could say oh man my team we reached out to all the better fights that people would actually want to see oh Crawford didn't want none Barrios didn't want none and Brian Norman the champion unification so the unis the unifications didn't want it and we had to fight Karen so it really sounds like a scapegoat so you can now have justification for why you're going to fight who Boots likely will fight, which is the ordered fight of Karen. Another example of this would be Terrence Crawford when he fought with top rank. So when he was fighting guys like Mean Machine and Amir Khan, you would hear these things in the news cycle from top rank or whoever. And they would say like, oh, we offered Danny Garcia life-changing money. We offer him three, four million dollars and talk to Angel Garcia and they turn Bud down. Right. More recently, another example of this is Shakur Stevenson fighting Cordina, Cordova, whatever his name is. People were saying that Javante Tank Davis was the next fight. Put out cap lies. That's not the next fight. Then they said he was fighting William Zapata. Come to find out he's not fighting Zapata. Other people were saying he's going to fight Pitbull and Ray Murataya. And now Shakur is fighting Joe Cordina, a guy moving up in weight, coming off a loss. He's going to say he has to fight Cordina because Pitbull and Tank and Zapata and Murataya and every other better fight, they're going to say he turned, they turned it down. Lomachenko. You know, it's it's peep to play, people. It is very easy to see. And shame on you if you guys are listening to a lot of the BS. There's a lot of content creators. They don't have quality. The information is not quality. It's a bunch of clickbait. People rushing out content. People rushing out posts. 
they don't care about the growth of the sport of boxing. Me, I care about boxing, and I put boxing before me. Like, of course, I need to make money. That just goes without saying. But you can do that with integrity. And again, there's a lot of people, they're just rushing out content to try to jog up clicks. And you can analyze the situation and determine if it makes sense. Me, I'm not into that. I'm not going to just rush out a bunch of videos. I could do 40 videos a day and then none of them are vouched. That's not what I want to be known for. You know, I could just try to run the numbers up like, oh, Tank, he's ducking and, you know, say whatever the common thoughts are. But I'm not about that. I use my channel for good. The Batman, the Bruce Wayne of boxing. And it is what it is. But this is very obviously a pattern in boxing where you have guys who you know it just becomes a name dropping contest for fights that aren't going to happen and let's say they sent an offer to barrios let's say they sent an offer to brian norman well norman's team said they're countering that offer, and then you're making it sound like oh we're moving on he turned it down what part of negotiation is that so if you apply for a job, they say, we'll give you 16 an hour. And you're like, no, nah, I want 1950. I believe I'm qualified in my experience, you know, in similar work at my current job. I, I want 1950. I mean, that you have the right to do that. They don't have to pay you the 1950. But if you don't want the 15 and you think you're worth more, you could try to fight for that. But the way you seemingly see some of these situations playing out to the point where it's like we sent an offer and they didn't want to take it in a couple of days or a week or whatever. And then you give up that, that sounds like a cloud chase and it's been going on, you know, and we've seen this with Eddie Hearn before where he'll make these God awful fights for Demetrius Andre, boo boo Andre, when Andre was with, with, with them. And then, Blame everybody else. Blame Al Heyman, PBC, Jamal Charlo for not fighting him and say, oh, Jamal's ducking and that's the fight we want. You couldn't get it done, sir. You know, maybe as a promoter, you have to improve your relationships in the industry to maybe get some of those things done because you can't seem to move these fights over the line. And a lot of you guys said that boxing ego was wrong when I made my initial thoughts video about Jerron Boots Ennis teaming up with Eddie Hearn, I said, it's cool for him in terms of getting more money and getting overpaid, but in terms of legacy and the meaningful fights, I, I don't think it's a, the best move, right? You should have stayed with Showtime, which like basically migrated to Amazon Prime and what else? Whatever else, if they get a second network, which is being reported that Al Heyman might get a linear network, right? That made more sense to me because 47 is no longer a glamour division right now in 2024. There's not that many options. And then the options that people would want to see, they're not happening. And you guys praised Boots for going to Matro. Oh, he's going to be active. Yeah, but again, like I said, we're talking quantity versus quality. He's making money and he's making more per fight, but none of these fights are even better than his fights on Showtime. So what is it really worth? What does it really matter that he's staying more active, but his talent is being wasted by fighting Karen part two, which was a God awful first fight. Who wants to see the second fight? You dig. So, when I said what I said, like always, I'm on the front line. People say they don't understand it. We're only two fights deep into Jerron Ennis's career at Matchroom, rematchroom, and it looks like more of the same. The level of competition, you're on the same side as Crawford, basically. Turkey, you guys praise Turkey and say he has all the money and he got expendable money and money don't matter but then they won't or can't make boots in his versus crawford and then now they can't make mario barrios which i told y'all versus boots and now they're saying they can't make 
boots versus a top rank fighter, even though the top rank fighter is saying we're down, just pay us right. What happened to the endless, you know, billion dollar war chest and Turkey has money to burn? Brian Norman's team, they're saying, you know, we sent you a counter offer. So I'm not the smartest brother in the world, but I would imagine a counter offer nine times out of 10 probably involves money, which is what they're countering. So if Turkey has all this bread and you said you're going to uplift boots and give them the biggest fights, why is it so hard? Because people want to blame PBC. Brian Norman is not with PBC. He's with top rank. Top rank just had a fighter, Jared Big Baby Anderson, fight Bacoli on a turkey card. So why can't they get this over the line? So again, peep the play. Don't be surprised when Jerron Boots Ennis and Karen Ch Chukini, a flyer comes out for that particular fight. That's how I see it as far as like the turn down and we're moving on and we have to fight Karen. It's the same play. It's the same all around the world same song it's just the same old song it's the same old song same song and dance boots versus karen book it